G'day! I'm out giving the bike a shakedown today. It's had its first service. What do I think of the bike after 740 miles? Not bad. Got a few little nigglies like the mirrors, which everyone knows about. Uh, heat under the seat, I'll get a bit of that, but not nothing to really concern me. It's it's certainly nowhere near as bad as the Panigale. Um, now that was hot, even in the UK. Handles well. I like the handling, very neutral. Quite, yeah, and stable. Yeah, you have to put in a bit more effort than a jet bike, but I like that in a bike. Still think it could do with some more power. Uh, that's just my opinion. just for the giggle factor and two up riding of course so seat in position yes I like I have no problems with that but I never had any problems with the Panigale um, I, oh I do get a little ache in the shoulder on this one but I'm, I think that'll probably go after a while I think they're just getting used to the different position I'm sat in. So, uh, nice little pub here, right alongside the river. Sit out there on a summer's evening. Lovely. Nice riding under these trees, out of the sun. It's lovely. Cleaning the bike. Now I've looked at some of the products and... Wow. They were expensive. I think one was like 80 quid for one bot bottle. Um, I'm not playing that. I've got the bike on a PCP. Uh, I don't intend to keep it after the PCP, I don't think. I'm hoping that Ducati will bring out a bigger engine or something that's a little bit more comfortable for a pillion. Because it's not the most comfortable bike for a pillion. I know it's not really, you know, they say it's a sports bike for the road. Um, but they could have just made that subframe a little bit longer and shortened that bloody arm that holds the uh, indicators and registration plate and made that seat a little bit more comfortable for the pillion but hey uh, that's Ducati it wouldn't have looked nice not that that bloody arm looks any better so yeah I di digress cleaning products uh, what I've done I'll, I was looking for the for the finishes and they're all quite expensive I found or they don't do them 
and I was actually I stumbled on a um, article from Autoglim and they were talking about satin and matte finishes on cars and they tested some of their car products that are made for normal paint and they said they do not affect the satin or matte finishes so you can use them it doesn't damage the paintwork um, again I might do a little video on that or I might just add the link to this video we'll see so, and I can't remember all the names of the products I know one was the shampoo which was a bit confusing because it was I think it was called body shampoo and they do body sh conditioner shampoo but they just said body shampoo and then they recommended another product which said only use body conditioner shampoo because if you use a normal shampoo it takes this off so well, I've gone with what they've said anyway and just bearing in mind that when I put that stuff on I might have to reapply it every time I wash the bike uh, and that's and that just gives it a coating a hard surface without damaging damaging it as a spot cleaner so if you've got finger finger marks or some dead flies that are just fresh they recommended their glass cleaner um, which I bought and used that, yeah, that, <laughs> that does the trick spray that on and clean clean the dead flies but like I say if they if leave them they dry on then uh, it's probably going to be a little bit harder work They also recommended their tar remover, which I thought might have been a bit harsh, but apparently they've done tests with that and that hasn't damaged it. So if you get anything that's really stuck on, you can use that sparingly. But I think I'll do a I'll probably do a, a separate video on all that because I can't remember the products and I can then show you what I've what I've brought and a link to the article that I read. So it's just not me saying, oh yeah, this is safe. It doesn't damage your paintwork when I've only used it like a month. This is these guys testing it thoroughly and saying yeah, this works. I've just realised I've gone the wrong way. <laughs> I hadn't intended to come in this way, but hey oh. <laughs> we'll go on the road that I lost my K13 on a few years back riding too quick right here I was coming the opposite way and there's a double bend here came around the first one couldn't make this second one and ended up in the edge the other side of the road but I managed to scrub all the speed off so it was just injured pride and a damaged shift lever Bloody cyclists, they're dangerous.
Oh yeah, so the first service, I dropped it in and I had a, f a few little niggles with the bike. One was that oil leak, they'd actually wired the front indicators back to front. So when I was indicating right, it was, it was indicating left. Luckily, I never had any near misses or anything. So that was that was bloody dangerous. They blamed the factory for that. Um, but I think the bikes come with the indicators off. I, I don't know, but not very clever. Like I say, the oil leak. I want to see whether that really was a loose filter. I don't think it was. Um, so we'll see. When I stop for a break, I check. It generally collects on the cap. Um, I, it hasn't been that bad that it's been getting onto the wheel or anything that well not that I know of anyway. I did see an interesting video actually the other the week where this guy actually cleans the tires. He used something to get the oil off the surface of the tire. Never never seen it before, never even thought about doing it before. Right. I've got to figure out how I'm going to get to the roads that I was intending on going to. Um, I think we'll go through the wallops. <laughs> 